I think we may have a bit of a problem here. Much better. Hello friends, it's Nick with The Whip Shop and I have here in my hand what used to be a 10 foot 12 plat kangaroo hide indie style bull whip. And this is going to be undoubtedly the most challenging, ambitious, and all around difficult whip repair that I've ever embarked on. Embarked on, pun intended, because a puppy actually chewed off the second five feet of this whip. It used to be 10 feet. These things happen. We have pets, we love them, but uh, they don't know what they're doing. Why'd you do this, Herman Sherman? But I'm just curious about how that tasted for that puppy because a dog's sense of smell is so much better than ours. Can dogs taste things a lot more than we can? Because I feel like if I chewed on this whip, it'd be bitter, especially with the But maybe uh, since dogs have such a good sense of smell, taste they... those undetected flavors. Anyways, friends, the whole idea here is to splice in brand new strands of this whip, not only on the overlay, but in the core of the whip. So can I pull this off? I have no idea, but we're gonna find out. Reese sent me this whip and said, what can, what can you do with it? And I didn't make any like solid promises, like, oh, it's gonna be perfect. I, I did express some wariness about being able to pull this off. At the end of the day, he just said, do what you can do with it. And I looked at it in the pictures and I thought, man, the first thing that I'm thinking about doing is unplatting, you know, maybe halfway up to here and then just resizing all of those strands down on the overlay and in the core of the whip and thinking, well, maybe I can just turn this into a five foot whip. That was kind of what we were talking about doing. But then I thought to myself, I kind of want to challenge myself a little bit and do something that I've never done before. Here's the game plan. What we're going to do is we're going to unplat probably about two feet all the way up here. And I'm going to attempt to insert strands into the core. I'm probably going to try to insert uh, a bolster if we need to. A lot of the times on a kangaroo hide whip like this, an indie style, the bolster is nearing the width of the drop strands that make up the core. So until we kind of open this thing up, uh, we're not really going to be sure about what needs to be done. So that's going to be the next step is to open it up. And ultimately, I'm going to be staggering splicing in strands in a staggered fashion. I don't want to splice them all in at once because that'd be a weak point. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to attach the new strands to the old strands. Probably some sort of adhesive just to hold them in place. Uh, but as we plat down, I'm thinking that the natural tightening of the plaiting will hold those, hold those strands into place. It's not going to look like it first did, of course, but I'm excited to see what we can do with it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you're new here, my name's Nick Schrader. I'm a whip maker and a filmmaker, and this YouTube channel is all about mostly whip making tutorials, but it also covers whip related events, some interviews with other whip makers, some collaborations, and it's all about the world of whips, science behind whips, uh, what makes a whip crack, stuff like that. So if you guys think you might enjoy future videos, I'd appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button and maybe we can get to a million subscribers by tomorrow. Just kidding. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, we have the whip in the clamp here. Let it just be known from the beginning here of this repair job that I'm I'm not by roots, my roots. I'm, I'm not a leather whip maker. So a lot of you who make leather whips will see this video and you'll probably be seeing me do something completely not common. And I would uh, ask you to please, in the, the uh, comment section, just let me know what I could be doing differently. So we have here the whip unraveled a little ways, coming up at about 10 inches. Here's the cut point, as you can see. Our little guy chewed right there. So I've unraveled the whip and revealed underneath, we can see the second belly right there, as well as the second bolster right here that tapers down. So apparently this whip has had no strand drops yet, and that's okay. What I think we're gonna do is probably unwrap a little bit further and go ahead and tackle this layer underneath first. So you can see there's four strands right there. There's a four plat braid right there. And inside are various 
couple little strands from probably the maybe the first belly you can see some little black strands there so we're gonna splice in some strands here and I think the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna again go up a little bit further and kind of lay those strands into the core underneath and then pull them out and then replace these strands and it'll make more sense when we get there I can only explain so much without actually doing it on screen which we will in a second so we're gonna go ahead and tackle that second belly and this bolster here get those to length I want these I want this layer underneath the overlay to extend about well if we're reaching for the, the full 10 feet I'd like to see this reach about seven feet seven and a half feet at least so let's go ahead and tackle that I'm going to unravel this a little bit more and we'll get started here but let me just say this is an absolutely beautiful whip look at this everything is just beautiful anyways of course I got this in here to protect the whip from the abrasive jaws of the vise so let's get started what do we have here my friends let's find out this is a drum stuffed kangaroo hide from hard key leather i've spoken with mr hard key on the phone you should know this by now i believe he's located in texas don't quote me on that but if you're looking for a source for kangaroo hide within the United States or out of the United States. I think he ships worldwide as well. Mr. Jay Harkey has quick shipping and every hide I've ever gotten from him, which again, hasn't been too many. I'll probably want to say I probably purchased five hides from him. Um, very high quality. Sometimes you'll get kangaroo skins from uh, different suppliers and you'll see a bunch of scars and stuff where the kangaroo fought with another kangaroo or whatever. But this is me just checking this out for the first time. A beautiful brandy drum stuffed kangaroo hide. Look at that. Let's lay it down. Oh yeah, actually first, let's go ahead and, oh yes, perfect. This is what I was a little bit worried about, matching that color with Reese's whip. Brandy. And then once we shellac it in the end, uh, it'll kind of deepen in richness just a little bit. So I'm really pleased with this hide. Let's put it down here and take a look at it a little closer. This is actually the largest one that I could find currently from Jay Hardkey. He's uh, hopefully he's going to have some new hides coming soon, but I usually like to just buy the biggest one I can. Don't mind the mess. It's only temporary. Anyways. So I'm kind of looking through here for a different color to use for that second belly. I want to kind of keep as much of that brandy around as possible because it's been sort of a hard color to get. I've hear, I hear, I've heard lately. So I have here a nice black drum stuffed kangaroo skin. We're going to go ahead and use this. This thing is huge. This is actually the size I would have preferred to purchase in brandy, but Unfortunately, they were out of stock at this time. So here's something that I would like to tell you guys right now. If you're completely new to cutting strands of leather from a hide, um, first off, let's go ahead and measure real quick. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're gonna measure the width of these strands here of the second belly that we're gonna be continuing. So let's see. It's about six millimeters. This one looks about six as well. That's six. This one's probably about five. Yeah, five millimeters. So what we're gonna do is, is cut around in a big circle this hide. Now, particularly on a kangaroo skin, it's known to not be very stretchy, but it's still gonna stretch a little bit on the edges, particularly, particularly around the arms of the kangaroo and the sides. When you're starting a hide from the very outside, you have to compensate a little bit. So we need these strands to be six millimeters. That doesn't mean that we just take our strander, set it for 16 millimeters and start cutting. We have to compensate a little bit. So as you work your way in and this hide gets smaller and smaller, the strands, the leather itself becomes less resistant. I should say more resistant to stretching. 
so you can kind of get a little bit more precise from the get-go. Because we're working from the edges, which are more stretchy, I'm probably going to set my strander to seven and a half millimeters, maybe eight in some spots. So when we stretch the leather, it should all shrink down to where there are no spots that are less than six millimeters. Then we just take the whole thing and resize it so it's consist consistently six millimeters. So this is going to be what we're going to use for our second belly continuation, which is right here. And for that second bolster right here, course we'll measure that and probably going to use this cowhide for that bolster I have, actually have another side of cowhide to use we're just cut that same idea a little bit wider than we want it to be then we'll, we'll pull it stretch it it'll shrink a little bit and then we can resize it so know that if you're going to make a leather whip or repair a whip that um, requires cutting new strands you have to compensate a little bit for the stretch of leather all leather stretches a little bit This is called a leather strander. I purchased this years ago. Basically, you can adjust the width that you want with this wheel. I hit like this, back and forth. And then we just start it like this. And we go all the way around like this. So I'm just gonna just kind of test this and see how we're looking. Now watch when I pull this. See that stretch that I'm talking about? We may have started off at eight millimeters, but we just stretched it down to probably six and a half, maybe seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around this hide a few times to accumulate enough strandage, shall we say, to be used for that second belly continuation. So around we go, probably cutting a little bit wider than I need to right now, but I'm always just paranoid about shrinking. Guys, this is not a tutorial. Please understand this is not a tutorial. I'm still, or I'm not still, I'm blazing a trail right now. You were learning right along with me as to how this is gonna work, because I can't guarantee it's even gonna work. But if you're watching this video, it must have worked, I hope. I don't know. All right, so we're gonna go, and we'll just stop it right here. Right there. Okay. I'm not going to stretch it yet because when we stretch leather, we want to do something called wet stretching where we dunk it in water and stretch it immediately after. So this is the strand once resized. This is the strand that's going to replace, continue on this one. Another thing I want to pay attention to is the thickness of both of these strands. We want them to be pretty close because if this strand is a lot thicker than this one, it's gonna cause a little lump in the whip. That's definitely something we do not want. So pretty close. I think we're gonna be okay. Okay, we got some strands here. I think this is plenty, probably double what we'll need to continue our second belly strands. So the next step is to grab these old bad birds here we're gonna go over to the sink. Anyways, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna fill up the sink. I'm gonna use cold water. And we're just gonna give these strands a little dunk in the water. Grab the strands, give them a little dunk like this. And what this is doing, to my understanding, is it is absorbing some water so that when we go to stretch them, it'll help them stretch without breaking. Looks good. And what I'm gonna do is tie, well, that's probably not gonna work, is it? Maybe it will, we'll see. There's a few different ways of stretching your strands. And this is called wet stretching again, as I mentioned previously before. I'm just going to go the full length of the strand, 
This is something that Blake Bruning, my friend of Trinity Whips, taught me. I'm just gonna... And it was at that very moment, the camera battery died. Guys, we're gonna go into greater detail with wet stretching later on. Basically, I just tied the strand to that weight machine and pulled all the slack out of it to get it to stretch to its final length. We'll talk more about this a little bit later. Now, if you haven't already noticed, my whip shop is currently not set up for making leather whips. So all these strands have just been stretched, wet stretched. The next thing we're gonna do is resize these strands. So as I mentioned, there's variations, there's waves in the strand because when we stretched it, some parts are more resistant to stretching than others. So now I have here a little razor blade. I'm gonna put this in here. This is a little jig that I bought years ago and I couldn't tell you where I got it. I, I cannot remember where I got it. But basically it just holds the razor blade and it has a little screw on the bottom and get this out of the way. There's a few little jigs attached here. One of them is angled so you can bevel strands as well. But this is going to allow us to get that final size of our strand. And now we're aiming for exactly six millimeters. So I'm going to take my calipers and just kind of size that up to six millimeters. Now we tighten that down. So let's go ahead and grab the end of our strand. Now flesh side down or skin side down, I don't know what's best. As I mentioned, this isn't a tutorial. So see, we're just running this through here like this. Maybe a little closer for you guys. Now this is something that I've done before when I was extremely tired. And I ended up dragging my finger through this thing, this blade. This is a very, I won't say dangerous arrangement, but boy, I tell you guys, don't forget about that razor blade being there. When you're not working, take it out. The next step is to run this strand through what's called a leather splitter. It's exactly what it sounds like. We're splitting this leather in half or not a half, we're taking off some of the leather so that we can get it a little a little thinner. Because right now, if we compare it to the strand that is currently our second belly, this is much thinner than the one we're working with right now. So if we left that in there, there'd be a bulky spot in the whip and we don't want that to happen. So we go flesh side up. In other words, this is the outside, this is the inner part and we just pull it through this strand, this uh, leather splitter here. A little wheel that turns and a blade that splits it down to a thinner diameter. I'm gonna do the whole strand like this. Alrighty guys, we've received some things in the mail. Number one is this leather glue by a company called Guo Elephant. Guo Elephant leather glue. Never used it in my life. I'm really curious how this is going to work. Uh, of course, now we have some Schick injector blades. And I got seven of them here. Let's see if I can figure this. There we go. First off, I have here four six-foot strands of our black kangaroo hide that we split on the splitter as well as resize. So these are going to be spliced in and carry out that final belly of the whip. So let's go ahead and open this thing up here. And basically what this does, it's sort of like a splitter, but it allows you to split the leather all the way down so that it is a nice ramp instead of a sharp cutoff. And I'll show you what that looks like. This goes in here. This goes on top here. Like this. And what you'll notice with the Skyver, I got this from Tandy Leather years ago, is Hopefully the camera picks this up, but there's a slight bend. It's putting pressure on the blade so that it's kind of concave. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these strands and skive them. So this is all that skiving means. First off, I'm gonna cut them at a perfect cut like this. And I'm gonna skive about an inch like this. So we take this and it's just allowing us to thin this out all the way down I want a little too. It's going to take a little bit of practice here for me to get this. I don't want to do too much, but 
Yeah, so see this, how it just tapers down and gets thinner and thinner. That's one down. Let's go ahead and set this up here to the next one. And we're just skiving all of these strands. Oh, it's very, very touchy. It's easy to go too far, dig too much meat out of the leather. That looks good. It just tapers off to less than paper thin in size. Now what I'm gonna do is take all these strands, I take the skived end of all these strands in my left hand. I'm going to just kind of lay this bolster aside. I'm gonna unplat a little bit here, just several inches like this. And this is just four plat, this is really a very manageable plat count. And one by one, we're going to be using that leather glue to glue the strands initially into the core, and then we're going to be kind of dropping them out into the, the actual strands. And I think that's enough there. So let's go ahead and take out our Guo Elephant <laughs> brand glue. It's in here. And they give you these really neat little, almost looks like little Prince Rupert's drops of plastic, and they cut off the end, they're hollow. So you can get a very fine amount of the glue where you need it to go. Here's our first strand. We're going to just lay it in here. Let me close that drawer. Just a little dab right there. You can see it going in the tube. Right there. There's our first little dab. Let's just go ahead and just hold that there, hold pressure on it for a few seconds. Yeah. Okay, I feel it already bonding nicely. That's good. Okay, so here is our first strand that we have glued into place, and I'm starting to have some suspicions that they just put on this. Oh, it's for leather, and this is just normal CA uh, instant drying glue because, I don't know, it's working, but it just feels like it has the same exact consistency as normal glue. Anyway, let's go ahead and start plaiting here. I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing with all of these strands that we splice in. Apply it a little bit more. Like this. And now once we cover that splice in area, we're going to pull that strand out and it's going to become the new, one of those new strands for that four plat. And we'll do that right about now. And I have to resist the temptation to pull super tight on it. Okay, so what we're going to do is pull this outward like this and just keep on plaiting like this. And this is going to become our new, one of our new strands. Now we're just going to let this one go because it's one of the chewed ones. And now here we are. This is our replaced strand. So again, forcing myself to be gentle with this strand initially. And later on, we can start to pull it a little tighter. Just like that. There we go. Like this. And pretty soon, we'll be splicing in strand number two of a total of four. And let's go ahead and do that now. So now this strand is the one we're dropping. This is the replacement. That looks pretty good. What I was kind of concerned about is there being a swell here, but I think because we split the black strand down to the same width as all the strands that are original, we'll be okay. So here's our second strand, and I want to try to give you guys a close-up of what the Skyver did. It's just a gradual ramp that decreases in thickness down to just not even the thickness of a piece of paper. And that is so we don't get a bulge where we glue it in. So let's grab our glue and make sure we're in focus. And it's time to glue in our second strand. I'm just gonna apply it to the strand itself here. There we go. The little spout they give you is actually really nice. 
put it right here. Second splice and hold it with my fingers so it cures. I'm one with the whip right now. I'm glued in. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we started one on the right. I think we're going to go ahead and push this one to the left. There we go. Keep on plaiting. Make sure to not accidentally grab the strand that's going to be dropped there. That. So now this one is the one that's going to be dropped. One more pull, and now we just ignore it from here on out. So we're still going under two, over two. And I'm making sure not to accidentally go underneath all these little tiny strands that are tapered out, because those are what are used for kind of tapering out the layer underneath. So there we go, very good. And now there we go, see that? We got two black strands and then two original strands. There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh. So now this is the dropped one, and now we can continue plaiting under one over one. So now we got two black strands and two original tan strands. Plat a little bit more, and we'll go ahead and splice in our third strand. Again, here is the skived end. We're going to add our little bit of glue there brush it on there and I'll just kind of reach under here tuck it in and press it in with our fingers like that very good and then this one will go to the right now as this is drying unfortunately I have noticed that this glue does not dry still flexible. I was hoping because it's leather glue it would dry still being able to be maneuvered. But it's not the case. That's why I'm suspecting that the company just said, oh, you can use this for leather too. And they called it specifically leather glue even though it's just normal super glue, CA. So that's okay though because as it's drying I'm kind of shaping it with my fingers so that it's round. And now we can continue plaiting. And this, this black strand that we just inserted, spliced in, is going to go to the right. So there it is, to the right. This one's gone, we don't worry about that anymore. That's gonna be dropped out. And again, these strands are six feet long. These four strands are six feet long and it's probably overkill you know much more length than I need but since I've never done this before I'm erring on the side of uh, excess because it's a lot easier to cut strands that are too long than it is to splice in strands that are not long enough as you can obviously see here let's go ahead and put in our final strand and there's a little crease here a fold in the bolster I think we'll just slip that final strand in there and kind of use that to sandwich it in. We're just gonna get a little bit of glue. Oh, I just made a little face there, you see that? Had a smile too, so maybe that means uh, this project is gonna go well. All right, let's lift up these bad birds, and slip this in here, and just sandwich it in like that. Okay, there we go. I like where this is going. Hold it for a couple seconds. Yeah, so it's, yeah, just sort of sandwiched in there with the bolster. And now we can continue plaiting. Make sure I'm not accidentally grabbing that one. That's the old one. And once we kind of work our way from the adhesive, the glue, I'm going to be applying some plaiting soap, which is a mixture of lard, pig fat, and ivory soap with water. It's a recipe on davidmorgan.com, their website, and they teach you how to actually prepare and use plaiting soap. 
braiding soap is another word for it. I'm just going to peel that a little bit. This is the dropped one. One more pull. Dropping it to the outside because this is not the overlay. It doesn't matter. Let me get it out of the way there. And we're looking good. Plat that strand. You can kind of hear those strands rubbing up against each other. That's just because I don't have any lubrication on them right now. Okay, pull those. That looks pretty good. Once this is rolled, this is going to lay much more flat. But there we go. We have all four strands spliced in. And as you can see, the old ones were dropped. And we just, we just have transitioned to this new leather. So this is a good feeling. This is a nice little milestone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give these one last pull. Reach for my little knife here. All four drop strands. One, two, three, four. And I'm just going to cut each one of them at the base here, right here. That looks good. Here's another one. Careful not to cut the strand above it. And here's the final one right here. Excellent. Oh, spoke too soon. This is the final one. Okay. All right, so next, what we're gonna need to do is we're going to splice in a continuation of this bolster right here. This is the second bolster, I believe, in this whip. So I'm gonna take some cowhide and take a measurement here and just make a, an elongated triangle that this continues out to and basically just tapers down to the same size of these strands. As we work our way down, we're still gonna be needing to taper those strands of the final belly. But so far, I'm really pleased with the results here that you see. So I have here a piece of cowhide that is just about 36 inches. And what we're gonna do is make a perfect straight edge. Unfortunately, for some reason, uh, the edge of this was not straight. So I'm actually just right now cutting a perfectly straight line that I drew and then we can go ahead take a measurement of the second bolster on the whip to see where we're going to continue that out. Don't think these scissors are rated for fabric but they were cheaper so I'm just going to use them as such <laughs> and buy more when these wear out. I had a pair of scissors before that had a built-in sharpener on the little sleeve that you put the scissors in, a sheath, and that was kind of nice. I'm sure I could get another one of those. Okay. Okay, so that should be a straight edge. Now let's go ahead and get my caliper. So here is the bolster, second bolster that we're gonna be continuing. Uh, it kind of narrows out a little bit there, so what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to cut it off right here. I'll take that measurement with my calipers so that we can continue it, and that's about 12 millimeters. Okay. So over here, we're going to measure 12 millimeters. That's where we're picking things up where it left off. Mark this with the pen. couple little lines there, there's one there, and then down over a little ways. Now I can just take this, okay, measure that out, and I just want, thing, uh, I want this whole thing to just taper like a giant elongated triangle. And I'll show you a close-up of what I'm doing exactly here in a second. While I have it actually 
laid out, I'm going to go ahead and mark this so I know where to cut. Okay. And just for future reference, if you guys ever work with uh, leather, pens work really good for marking a line. So here we have our elongated triangles. You can see it just tapers out all the way to a fine point. So we're gonna cut this out and this is gonna be what we're going to splice onto the second bolster. And then we're gonna be doing later on the same thing with a much longer piece for that final bolster, which is much wider. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the scissors and just cut this out. We'll skive this, we'll also skive this and then splice them together. So here it is. The continuation of the second bolster. Now I'm going to split this. I think I'm going to put it in wide side first. Like this. I've noticed, I don't know, I'm, I don't feel like I'm very good at splitting leather. A lot of the times I accidentally just tear through the whole thing. So if I put down pressure on it, it seems to always be a much better result if I just... See that? There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip this flesh side up, and I'm going to skive this, hmm, I'd say at least about an inch right here. So I'm starting here and just tapering it out by skiving, so this is going to be a little bit tricky, I think. Sometimes it just digs in so abruptly before you even have a chance to gauge the thickness of the piece. I know a lot of people are probably gonna say, you have a leather splitter over there on your bench. Why in the world are you not using that for this? And that's a very fair point. I'm just, I'd like to keep it the thickness that it already is, the splitter. I'd like to keep these settings where they are because I'll be doing more splitting later on with the other bolster and I wanna keep it right where it's at at the moment. How's that look? Not great. <clears throat> We're just feathering it out. I'm trying to. Maybe if I go faster. Yeah, there we go. I think I just may have cracked the code of the skiver. There we go. So that's feathered out to the tip. Now we're going to do the same thing to what's already on the whip itself. This is what I'm using as my platform. This is a 2006 participation tro trophy for the Soapbox Derby race. I raced in Soapbox Derby for nine years. In the last year, I won first place in my town, and I got to go to Akron, Ohio for the World Championship race. That was pretty cool. I didn't do very well there, but just getting to go to Akron, Ohio was a really neat experience. That was pretty good there. Okay, so if you can't already see the idea here, this is what it is. Two skived pieces stuck together like this. And I cut that a little bit wide there, so I'm gonna have to trim that up with the scissors just a little bit. Doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to be the same density more or less, same width and everything this and I think when I glue this I'm probably gonna fold it like that keep the glue supple so let's grab the glue put a little bit in here maybe a little bit on this side as well and sandwich it in this. Give a little squeeze. Oh, we're not even in focus. Sorry. There we go. Okay. I like where this is going. And obviously at this point, once that glue's dried, the next step is going to be as I mentioned, to grab a little bit of plaiting soap so we can lubricate these strands so they lock into place better as we're plaiting, and then just plait over that bolster and continue things out. And as I mentioned previously, as we work our way down, I'd like to see this reach 
with the bolster I'd like this to reach about around seven feet so we're gonna plat a little bit here work our way down and then we'll reassess the situation and then we'll probably go ahead and um, attach our final bolster piece cut that out and get that put into place then we can start the overlay which is more of the tent part as far as um, cosmetics go because that's obviously what you see the overlay under here we don't care how it looks we just want to make sure that it tapers evenly I'll probably be binding this lightly with artificial sinew too we'll see we'll see plaiting soap I've already applied a little bit but I'll just show you what this looks like it's basically almost like a cream and then we just slather it on our strands like this some people like to wipe off the excess I just kind of rub it around my hands and then we just plait under one over one and this is pretty much uh, the time where I'll either get a phone call my camera battery will be dead or the camera's out of focus and I need to touch it but I can't touch anything because my hands are greasy somebody will come to the door you know whatever <laughs> but anyway this just helps those strands slide and lock into place it just gives some lubrication so it's not dry leather on dry leather as you can see things are going nicely we can see the spliced in section right there I'm just kind of now that that glue is dry and it's actually underneath all the strands I'm just kind of taking my hand and just rubbing a little bit of conditioner into there as well because when we put this bolster on we don't want there to be any dry marks underneath because it causes creakiness you can actually hear a whip that is not well hydrated if somebody didn't use enough leather conditioner you can hear it when you roll it out the creaking sound so I'm just going to continue to plat down under one over one as you can see this is our bolster that we spliced in and as we continue working our way down I may actually thin these strands out a little bit resize them as we work our way down to achieve better taper I'll definitely be doing that with the bolster so I'm gonna keep going and I'll meet it back up with you okay so we've been working our way down plaiting everything feels pretty good but at this point I'd like to kind of resize this second bolster a little bit now I'm gonna to attempt to freehand this um, first off I'd like to mention that this is a beautiful set of 3d printed jigs made by my friend Josh and I got these from him about three years ago in Los Angeles. So I'm probably going to be using these on the overlay. But for this bolster right now, I'm actually going to attempt to freehand it. What I'm going to do is just, I'm going to slip this cardboard tube over my finger to protect it. And then as you can see, I'm just going to try to resize this a little bit. There we go. Just to get a little bit more triangle shape that's better so you can see it's a little bit oddly shaped here Let's see here there we go still we need to take off a tiny bit more there we go okay that looks pretty good we can continue to plat Grab a little bit more plating soap and I haven't resized these strands yet. <clears throat> As I mentioned, what I'm going to be doing here, I would imagine in the next few minutes, is actually taking those jigs made by Josh and uh, just kind of thinning these down, taking a millimeter or two off. Because this ends in four plat anyway, so that's the only chance we really get for taper is this bolster decreasing in width. And then we'd have to rely on these strands becoming more narrow as we work our way down, which we will be getting to. So I'm just going to keep on plaiting under one, over one. Just a basic four plait over this bolster, and I'll meet back up with you in a few minutes. Okay, so I've been plaiting along, and I think it's time that we start decreasing the width of these four strands. So what I'm going to do is just tie a little half hitch knot like this. And now I'm going to grab my four millimeter jig from Josh, grab a razor blade. <clears throat> and the way this works is really neat. You just lay this across here, set the razor blade in like this in a little slot, 
and then we just pull the strand out like this and see it taking off taking off the edge of that strand to resize it And I'm going to do this with every strand. And now that those are resized, we've taken off some of the edges. Go ahead and untie this knot and we can begin to plait once more. Under one, over one. And I want this to run about, probably about six feet. I would say six feet would be a good place for this. Um, six and a half feet maybe. And then we can just taper them out from there. So just continuing to plait. Okay, we have reached down to about the seven foot mark right here. I'm gonna stop plaiting, tie this off, and then just taper these strands out to basically nothing, almost. So we have here, of course, measuring from the heel of the whip, this is the seven foot mark. So again, we're just gonna tie an overhand knot like this with one of these strands so it doesn't come unravel when we pull tension as we are resizing the strands. I'm gonna grab this piece of leather and wrap it around my left index finger and this is going to serve as my finger protector from the blade. The tube didn't work very well. You kind of have to be able to feel pressure more consistently. And now one at a time, we're just gonna taper these strands out. So let's see if I can pull this off. This is so hard for me, I'll speak for myself. Way too short. Way too short. Thankfully we have three more to compensate with. It's looking better. That's what I was looking for. See, we're just basically just tapering these down to nothing. There we go. Good. I think we have two more to go. Yeah. Here's another one here. There we go. One more, and then we're going to take care of the bolster as well. So now we'll resize the bolster down to a fine point. Bolster was the one that was giving me trouble last time. And just taper it out. There we go. It's so touchy, just the angle that you hold that blade. Man, all right, I'll stop complaining. So there we go. That is all we really want to do with this. Now, at this point, take the whip out of the clamp and then re-clamp re it a little bit higher up. Go right, get this tangle out of the way, put it back up here. I'm just going to do a double one so it's not cutting into the overlay at all. Right there, I'll clamp that in nice and tight. Looks good. And now I'm going to move the bolster out of the way, and I'm just going to go over this with some artificial sinew. Because right now there's just, it's a little weaker there, it's just the nature of splicing in strands or at least the way I did it, that's causing a little bit of weakness, but we can overcome that by wrapping it, binding it a little bit with some artificial sinew. And I'm not gonna go crazy here because every little bit matters. So in other words, if I pile a whole bunch of artificial sinew on top of this, it's gonna create a bulge that's gonna be visible through the overlay of the whip, particularly paying attention to um, the part where we spliced in our black strands. Down 
here. Easing off the pressure, turning around and coming right back up. And this is gonna just give some strength here to our final belly. Pulling tighter and tighter as I reach the top of where I started. And I'm just doing some wraps a little closer together. There's where the strands were injected. Coming up to the top where we started. Right about here. Not bad. I'm just gonna tie a couple of half hitch knots here to ensure that this is not gonna be going anywhere. And of course this is gonna be covered up by a bolster and the overlay, so I'm not worried about it coming out. So that's good. Go ahead and give that a snip. No melt though, because this is leather. And there we go. Next step is going to be to cut our final bolster continuation, splice that in, and we'll go from there. Okay, so it is time to cut the continuation of the final bolster of our whip. I have here some cowhide, a longer piece because the other piece just isn't long enough. And what do we have here? 10% off on all six foot whips from nextwhipshop.com. Offer ends March 15th, 2023. Would you look at that? Head over to nextwhipshop.com, 10% off on all six foot custom whips. So let's go ahead and measure out what we're going to need as far as the length for our bolster continuation. So here's where it ends. We're gonna overlap a little bit when we splice it in. So I'm just gonna kind of ballpark this length here. Let's see, I want it to come about this far. So we're looking at about a little more than three feet for our bolster continuation length. Now let's go ahead and get the width of this bolster. Got our calipers right here. We're looking at about 23 millimeters. So we need to compensate a little bit for the stretch. So I'm gonna do 26 millimeters wide starting. All right, starting at 26 millimeters wide. That's 23, 24, 25, 26. That looks good about right there. Mark this. And we'll go down a little bit, mark it again. And then we just lay our yardstick here in the shape of a big old triangle. Like this. That looks good. And mark it. My car alarm was. Uh, going off by itself a little bit ago and it happened about four or five times. First time it happened I thought it was accidentally uh, that I had accidentally touched my keys but I didn't because they were on a completely different table so I ended up having to take <laughs> disconnect the battery. I have no idea what's going on with it. Now I can give this a little stretch and let's go ahead and put this in the splitter. Split it down. Look at that, looks like sawdust. Taking this thing like this, giving it a little stretch. You didn't see that. <laughs> It'll be okay. Okay. What time is it? Well, it's time to skive, of course. That's what time it is. It's been time to skive a lot during this project. And it will continue to be until the whip is finished. Let's go ahead and cut off a perfect 45 degree angle on here. Grab our skiver. Now look how thick this is right now, you see that? 
we want a nice ramp. And I've discovered that if you go nice and fast like this, it seems to work a little bit worse. <laughs> Try that again. Looks pretty good. Kind of like shaving, really. <clears throat> Wouldn't want to shave with that thing though. Woo! Take a chunk out of your face, man. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and skive what's on the whip. Okay, my friends, we have here our continuation of the final bolster. And I have skived the end of the replacement splicing piece as well as the original bolster itself right here. Next step is going to be to use our leather glue, and we're going to glue this into place. Now, I think what I'm going to do is do it this way, so we have the original outer bolster joined up on the back side, like this. So let's go ahead and take some of our leather glue, and just use sort of a genuine... Um, generous amount for this because this is an important part. Just lay it like this. Now what I'm actually going to do is grab this part here and just kind of help it cure in the shape that it's going to be like this. So we'll just hold that for a few seconds. Now what I'm going to do is just, since it's been spliced in, I'm going to lay this here and just kind of, as it's drying, encourage that wrapping shape. As you can see, there's the joint right there. It's pretty subtle. It's not 100% perfect. And take a look at it. There's the spliced in section. And there's the continuation of the final bolster. Next thing we're going to do is take some artificial sinew and just wrap over this bolster. Not really uh, to add any rigidity, just to kind of hold everything into place where it needs to be. So I misspoke a little bit on the binding. We're not going to do that quite yet. What I have here is some plaiting soap and we're going to be greasing the bolster here the inside and this is going to hydrate it and this part of the whip will hopefully never again be accessed so I'm gonna go ahead and really be generous with this plaiting soap this is all completely dry right here so we're gonna go ahead and take a big old handful of this stuff and this just hydrates our leather also gives it a little bit of weight and as I mentioned before you'll notice a whip that has not been one of two things it hasn't been greased properly or it's just dried out and when you roll the whip out you'll you'll hear kind of a a creaking kind of a groaning sound as the leather is um, kind of rubbing against the other leather underneath whether it be the belly or the bolsters so doing this makes a nice quiet whip lubricating this bolster here i'm also going to do this apply a generous amount of plaiting soap to what i've already plaited right here and there we have it a spliced in continuation of the bolster as you can see, it's nice and formed. So now we're ready to take some artificial sinew and bind this bolster to this final belly. After I wash my hands off, I'm going to stop recording with my tongue. So, oh man, my tongue isn't strong enough to hit the button. 
got grease all over my hands. So I'm going to go ahead and begin binding right up here with the artificial sinew. And we're going to fasten this bolster to the belly beneath. And again, this is not to add any extra rigidity to the whip. It's just to keep the bolster in contact with the belly underneath. I just feel like I work better that way with leather as of now. Not everybody does this. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of whip makers who make leather whips actually do not wrap or bind their bolster onto the belly beneath with our visual sinew. But I like to do it. It just makes me feel a little more comfortable. Now we're coming up real soon on our part that we spliced in right here. So let's see how it looks when we wrap this with the sinew. There's the splice. It's a little tiny noticeable drop off there, but nothing that's causing me any concern initially. So I think we're just gonna be just fine. And I'm just gonna bind this all the way down and up. Now, if you look here, we're just about ready to start binding over the part that I went ahead and tied off when we were resizing these strands. So what I'm gonna do is just untie these strands so that we can go over them with the bolster without there being any bulkiness caused by the knot. So there it is, ended in a four plat right there, and then just the loose tails that we're gonna be wrapping the bolster around. I'm going all the way down and I'll show you momentarily how far down I decide to go. I'm not sure yet. All right, my friends, we are gonna try our very hardest to finish this whip today. So I wanna give you a close up of what everything looks like right now. These are still the overlay strands that we're gonna be ultimately cutting and splicing in new strands with our new kangaroo hide that just so happens to match so perfectly. I'm really glad that that worked out. Brandy color, nice kangaroo skin, drum stuffed. So here is the spliced in bolster. And it's really actually hard to see where I spliced in the new part. It's right here. So I'm pretty happy with that. You can see it goes all the way down to about seven feet. Right here is the seven foot mark. So ideally, we're gonna cut 12 new strands. We're gonna splice them in right here. And then we're just gonna taper them a little bit further and some of those dropped strands will continue this part here. So even though we end at seven feet, I think we're still gonna be able to get the full 10 feet of the original length of this whip. Next step is to measure the width of these strands, and then we're going to cut 12 new strands to be spliced in. I'm gonna make the longest uh, strands about 12 feet. So I need to continue from here about six feet so again, I'm erring on the uh, cautious side. I wanna make them longer than I need because I don't have a lot of experience doing this. I've never done a repair like this, so uh, excess is key. So let's go ahead and take a measurement of those strands and we'll cut out some new strands of out of the kangaroo hide. Okay guys, so I have not touched this kangaroo skin yet and I wanna show you what it looks like. I wanna show you the process of trimming around the outside to make it all one smooth piece. So sometimes when you buy a kangaroo hide drum stuffed or um, vegetable tanned, it's a little dry. This one is not. All the stuff that I've gotten from Hard Key Leather is nice and hydrated, so I'm not going to need to put any type of conditioner on this leather. We're just going to jump right in and we're going to cut around and just get rid of all the rough edges. So this is how I'm doing this. I'm trying to preserve as much as possible while still making it one smooth piece. Go around here, really kind of going into this leg as much as I can. This part is really stretchy, so as much as I want to take all this, I'm not going to do it because the leather there would just end up being way too stretchy. So this part is the least stretchy part of the kangaroo skin. So for that reason, I'm gonna go all the way in there. See that? Right there. 
Again, we're coming up to another leg right here. And I will end up saving all these pieces that I'm cutting off, but they just won't be used for the overlay of the whip. Coming along the side here of the kangaroo. Again, this part here is sometimes a little bit stretchy. And then the top part here is not very stretchy. So we'll kind of go up here as well. And there we go. Again, kangaroo skin is expensive, my friends. So all this will be saved for future projects. Now, the way I cut this, ideally if you're going around and around to make lace, you don't want a lot of severe curves and corners and stuff. As a matter of fact, as we start trimming this down, these will be more pronounced, the sharp edges like you see here, the sharp curves. And we have to eliminate those at a certain point. Actually, this one right now as we speak is just a little bit, making me a little bit uncomfortable, so I'm just going to go around there and just make that less severe of a curve. Like this. There we go. Again, every time we have a little peak like that, that will kind of dictate the strand from the get-go, even though we're going to be trimming the strands, the, the edges off the strands, I'm doing this just so I have a nice surface from the beginning. And that looks good. Again, I'm so impressed with how nice this hide is. So that looks great. Let's put a new blade in our strander, get a measurement of the continuation overlay strands, and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is what we're looking at right here. What I think I'm going to do is just unravel this a little bit more. So we're starting at about the four foot mark. That gives us plenty of distance to splice in the new strands of kangaroo. So that looks nice right about there. Again, we're in a 12 plat. No strands have been dropped up until this point. Still, we started with 12 strands and the whip is still currently in 12 strands for the overlay. That's nice because we don't have to worry about any dropped strands yet, but we will eventually. So what I'm gonna do now is take a measurement with a caliper of this strand right there, and that is going to dictate the width of all the strands we're about to cut. Get my caliper. So let's see how we're looking. I'm gonna guess that is about five millimeters. Yeah, that looks like about five. Let's go ahead and kind of average these out. Whips are made by humans, so there's always a tiny bit of margin, you know? That's five as well. Let's see this one here. Yeah, five millimeters is what we're aiming for. So, of course, again, I have to mention again, that because we're cutting this from a natural hide, this is not synthetic, this is natural material. Came from a kangaroo, so we have to compensate by cutting the strands a little bit wider than we actually need because when we stretch them, they shrink. This is especially the case from the outer edge of the kangaroo skin. So I think what I'm gonna do is kinda do a little trial run. I'm gonna go all the way around here and I'm going to shoot for seven millimeters. So then when we wet stretch it with our bucket again, like we did with the first uh, strands we prepared, I think it should shrink down to about five. We may have to go eight millimeters, but I'm thinking seven will be sufficient. So let's go ahead, put a new blade in our strander. New blades, and here's the strander. Get that blade in, and we'll get started. Now real quick before we get this blade in here, I want to give you guys a little tip. Because cutting leather tends to uh, dull these blades so quickly, what I like to do is take a marker, permanent marker, and I'll just mark both sides of the blade. So that way when we stick it in the strander, we have the luxury of being able to adjust at what position the blade is cutting. So, you know, it can slide this way, this way. So if this part gets a little too dull, 
you just move it a little bit. And that, uh, that mark on there, which I just apparently rubbed off, I thought this was a permanent marker, <laughs> you'll see a wear mark. And that's how you know where you've already been. You can get the most out of your blades. So we just slide the blade in like this. There's a little washer and a little notch there on top. And then we just tighten it up like this, nice and tight. And that's ready to go. Now we just have to get our width right, our thickness with the wheel, and we're good. I got my calipers here. And then I'm just gonna cut a little test piece. I'm shooting for seven millimeters. And let's see the width of this. Looks about good. I'm just gonna decrease it ever so slightly. We're gonna do one round trip around this whole hide. That should give us about, probably about like eight, nine or 10 feet. And then at that point, we can go ahead and stretch that leather to make sure we're not cutting too thin to compensate for the stretch. So let's go, here we go. All right. Ah, nice fresh blade. There's something so luxurious about a freshly cutting blade. There's nothing more insulting than a, either a knife when you're cooking that's dull, it's just kind of a slap in the face, and when you get a fresh blade in there, it just glides, you know? Like shaving, you know, if you shave. It's just a, a simple pleasure of life to have a freshly cutting blade. So see what I mean? The idea is to just go around once to make sure there's no, like this part right here is really stretchy. That might actually stretch to less of a diameter than what we want, which is five millimeters. So here's our starting point right here. And now I'm gonna wet stretch this strand, make sure that it's okay. Okay, let's see how long this piece ended up being. It's about, I got a span of about five and a half feet, so five. That's six, seven, we'll probably get like eight feet out of this strand. So we're gonna dunk it in the water and stretch it. And if any part of this strand after stretching is less than five millimeters, then we need to make it a little bit wider on the kangaroo side. And I'm just gonna stretch this by hand, really, you know? Okay. It's a little sketchy there, but it actually looks like it's Oh, this is a good hide. If it's not breaking on the edge like this, that means it's a really good hide. Really good quality hide. It's been tanned properly. All right, so let's take a little look here and see if we have any spots that are less than five millimeters wide. All right, I'm gonna set my caliber for five millimeters. Lock it into place with a screw. I'm just gonna examine this thing and see. Yeah, see right here, that is most certainly less than five. Yeah, that's about three and a half. Yeah, that's probably about, what is that? That's just under five. Yeah, okay. Okay. So let's kind of take a look at where, yeah, this part is really stretchy right here. So, this is the inside, so I can just write on this all I want. So this part is really stretchy here. Now I could, if I wanted to, on the fly, adjust that wheel when I get to here, make it wider, and then go back to a less wasteful size. See, this is very stretchy in here too. That's actually really stretchy right here. Side a little bit. This is pretty good. Yeah, it's just the nature of a skin, you know? Of course up here, that is perfect up here. No worries there. This is good here. Just 
around the sides. It's not very good on the sides. So what we're gonna do, because I don't have a lot of experience with leather whips, is I'm gonna be a, a wasteful bad boy today and just open this up even more and just take off a consistent width of about eight and a half millimeters. I know it sounds wasteful, guys. I know it is. But that's what we're doing. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and cut 12 strands out of this thing. So we're gonna do that now. The strand sizes are gonna be, I'm gonna cut, um, none of these are gonna be folded in half, so it's gonna be four 12 foot strands. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four. Uh, we're gonna do two 10 footers, two eight footers, a couple six footers, just playing it by ear. But I want the four longest strands to be twice the length that we're braiding, which is six feet. Okay, so I have two 12 foot strands. I just want to see how we're looking here. So, dump them in the bucket. And give them a little wet, <laughs> give them a little wet stretch. So I'm just gonna take these ends here and tie them around the vise. Just a simple knot here. And I'm gonna stretch these like this. So there's equal tension on the strands. Again, this is something my friend Blake Bruning of Trinity Whips taught me. There we go, now the other one. Nice steady pressure. That's my body weight right there. This is a good hide, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so those are stretched. Let's examine for any points that are less than five millimeters wide. Okay, so good news. At no point did I see any spots after stretching this leather where the diameter, uh, or excuse me, the width was less than five millimeters. As a matter of fact, it was more like six. So that means I can begin to start cutting more accurately to what our actual width needs to be. So that means less waste. So what I'm gonna do is spin the little wheel, just make a little adjustment there. Another disclaimer, I have to keep saying this, this is not a tutorial, and I am not a professional leather whip maker. So right here, I actually want to mention something. You remember that I said that as we work our way around, the edges start getting more and more severe? That's coming up pretty close to being too much of a fine point. That means that the strand width would have um, too much length on one side than on the other. Like the same thing that makes hair curly, one side of the hair is longer than the other side basically. The same thing's going on here. So I'm about to stretch these strands and this is a really good example of what I meant by if your tips of your leather, the edges get too steep, the peaks get too sharp, you run into this. Let's see if I can get a better angle on that for you. See that, what's going on there? That just means that one side of that particular area of the leather is longer than the other. Now you can get away with a good amount of this. Here, let me just push one of these strands aside. Okay, I guess that's not gonna let us do that. Anyways, so when I pull this strand to stretch it, you'll see it straighten out. So see, we don't have anything to worry about there. But if those peaks get too sharp, you can't really pull out the tension and equalize it. Okay, so this is what we're left with. But here we have, Right there on the left hand side, we have four 12 foot strands, two 10 foot strands, two eight foot strands, two six foot strands, and two four foot strands. So these all make up 12 plat. What we're gonna do next, since they've been stretched already, is we're gonna take them downstairs into the shop. We're gonna resize them. We're gonna get the width five millimeters all around on all these strands. As much as I hate to say it, I didn't think I was gonna to have to do this, but I'm gonna to have to split all these too. Okay, my friends, we have all 12 strands. I've separated them right here. These are for the left. These are for the right side of the plaiting on our 12 plat overlay continuation. Um, these are all exactly five millimeters wide. Now, if you're a good leather whip maker, what you can do is actually taper the strands width before you start plaiting. I can't do that yet. So, so what we're gonna have to do is start plaiting, and then when I feel a little bit of crowding coming on, I'm probably going to have to resize all of these strands on the fly. 
probably get a lot of people making fun of me for that, but that's okay. That's okay. I don't mind. I promise I don't mind. I promise I have them tied off here, and then I'm just going to actually take an inch off, and I'm going to skive all of these strands and all of these strands. Now, it's really important to make sure that I have the strands divided evenly. So that means two 12-foot strands here, two 12-foot strands here, as opposed to like three 12-foot strands here, and one over here because then we'd be running out. So these are all even. Let's go ahead, lop off the ends here, and skive these strands, and then we're gonna be ready to inject them onto the overlay, and we'll be on the home stretch of this project. It's a beautiful day outside today. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just Cut them off, make sure that they're all the same length. I think it'll be easier for me to do it that way. And one at a time, we're gonna skive about half an inch into all these. And that's where the glue is going to be added. Okay, there's the first one. It's gonna do this to all of them. That's actually a nice clean cut. Look at that. Perfect. And I'm again, I'm not skiving the outside, the shiny side of the strand. I'm skiving the flesh side. Excellent. Okay, all those are done. Let's grab our second set of strands. Getting a little faster at it now. That's the funny thing it is, uh, the way it is sometimes with me. If I do something that I don't do a lot of, which is working with leather whips, sometimes I'll figure out the best way of doing something when I'm on my last strand. Kind of like this. Yeah, that's a nice clean sky right there. And Oh yeah, that's the best one yet. Well, my friends, it is time to start splicing these bad birds in. There's a little Cirrus SR22 single engine plane cruising around at 160 knots having a good old time up there look at this flight path we have the width of three strands right there we have all that distance to basically fuse the new strand onto our present strand all right guys it is time to begin splicing in strands here's how we're going to do this i'm just going to plat one more of these under three over three and now we're gonna start splicing strands in so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to glue this into place right there got the skived section and then just cut away the strand underneath it let's see how this works a little bit of glue here on the skived section and again we can kind of gauge it and see how much distance we have three st strands to work with here so a little bit of glue there looks good pulling this tight like this and I'm just gonna lay this right here hold it with my finger wait for it to dry And then the strand underneath it, let's grab the scissors, cutting out the one underneath, which is the original strand. And that is strand number one spliced in. And let's go ahead and continue plaiting and we'll do the same thing to the left hand side. Under three, over three. I have to resist the temptation to pull hard on that to begin with. How does it look? As you can see, there it is. It's the same color. I'm happy with that. And now, we'll go ahead and put one in on the left side. Let's increase the brightness a little bit, shall we? Splicing in strand number two, now to the left-hand side. That's all we need. 
your little pull. Lay it right there. I'm using too much glue. That's more more or less what I'm looking for right there. I can peel that back and snip the one underneath it. Just like that. All right. Two down, ten to go. Let's continue plaiting a little bit here. And once I get to my spliced strands, I want to be be gentle with them as far as pulling goes. Because, you know, we're going to rely on the natural tightening of the strands. Like later on, a few inches down, I'll be able to pull just as hard as I... Uh, do with a lot of these original strands. But this is going pretty good. I'm happy with this. Okay, a couple more and then we'll splice in another one on the right hand side again. And as I mentioned earlier, I want all these strands to be spliced in over a distance of about 10 inches. So that way we're not getting all of them spliced in at one time. I think that would be a very uh, potential uh, weak spot. That's my guess. It'd probably be okay, but I just think everything looks better this way as well when we splice them in over a, a greater distance. Get rid of this artificial sinew without cutting my strand. Okay. So we went right, then we went left, now we gotta go right again. I'm gonna back up one, grab another strand from the pile. Okay, splicing in strand number three. I gotta be a little more sparing with the glue because I'm kind of overdoing it. There we go. Maybe I just use the spout to spread it. That looks nice. We have 100% coverage there. And a little pull. I want you right there. Squeeze it. Always getting my fingers stuck to the glue. Underneath. Make sure we're cutting cutting the original strand and also making sure that I'm not accidentally splicing in a strand on top of a new strand that we put in already. That'd be uh, unfortunate. Okay, looks good. Keep plaiting there. And I can see this is an original strand, so I'm gonna give it quite a bit of pressure. Now here's the first one I believe that we spliced in. So I can start to pull a little bit tighter, but nothing crazy yet. Nothing crazy yet. Now the original one, we can go ahead and pull that bad bird. I'm trying to work around this camera and it is hard. I'm in the process of getting um, better filming set up for these videos, but right now I'm kind of going old school. Same thing I did in my original whip making tutorial, like, you know, there's the old same hose you saw in the 2013 video. Okay, so now we're going to do another one from the left, or add another one to the left. Definitely don't want it to be that one, because that's a new strand. But, once we get one on top of it, we surely can. One more. Okay, time to splice in another. Let's see if I can do this without gluing my finger to the whip this time. I think I have a bit of a method down. A little dab there and spread it with the spout. 
Again, making sure that I'm not gluing the shiny side. I want it to be even, or not even, but I want it to be consistent. Right there. So you gotta pull it tight to know where to glue them in. There we go. There we go. Didn't stick my finger that time. Hold it for several seconds. And cutting the old strand underneath. Continuing on. Here we go. And, oh, look at that. I pulled it off. See that? At least I know where it goes, though. I'm getting impatient, I guess. I guess I gotta wait a little bit longer before I pull it that tight. Let's try that again. Goes right there. I guess I should probably give these a minimum of a minute or two to dry each. Well, I do have a confession to make. I have been splicing strands in off camera. And as much as I would like to show you guys the entire process, I want to have the best result for my friend Reese. And I just felt like the camera was really distracting me having to reach around this thing. So I turned it off and I got all these strands spliced in. Battery's about to die. Starting up here, splicing, splicing, splicing. And I'm going to splice in the last one with you little glue and this is strand splice number 12 and I feel so much better that I've made it this far and now I can say with nearly 100% certainty that this whip is going to be almost as good as it was when it was first made actually who am I to say that I know who made this whip and that's a lie the guy who made this whip is a fantastic whip maker Hope to be as good as him someday. All right, so we spliced in our final strand, guys, and because we're not dealing with adhesive anymore, once we go another couple of inches, I'm actually going to reach over and grab our plaiting soap because these strands are super dry, and that's just not good. So anyway, I gotta change the battery. Here's our splice job starting up here. I'm really happy with the results. Of course, you see a little bit of strand folding there, but once we roll the whip, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I'm really happy with this. Woo, and we are on the home stretch, my friends. It's so good to be back into a fast, a semi-fast paced 12 plat of under three, over three. Uh, I took a bunch of leather uh, plaiting soap and I just greased the heck out of this area that we spliced the strands in. I didn't feel comfortable using the plaiting soap here because I wanted a you know, an untainted bond between leather on leather, and I felt like the plaiting soap, if I was using it in that area, would um, it'd be a negative effect on the, the glue itself. So here we go. Now you might see something going on right here. We're having some strand crowding, so pretty soon we're going to have to resize all these strands. Again, if you are a good leather whip maker, you take care of this from the beginning. In other words, you resize your strands before you even start plaiting. I am incapable of doing that at this current time of my life as a leather whip maker, so we're going to have to resize all these strands in a few minutes. I'm trying to think about how I want to do it. Do I want to use the resizer downstairs or risk these strands with a jig and do it handheld? I don't know. Okay, guys, so let's take a look here. This is where we spliced our strands in, and as you can see, I'm plaiting my way down, and there is quite a bit of crowding of strands going on right here, so what I'm going to have to do is resize all these strands a half a millimeter down. So what I'm gonna do is just take the furthest strand down and just tie a half hitch knot so that the plaiting does not come undone. Like this. Pull that up there. And this should keep everything from becoming unraveled. So I'm just gonna grab one strand at a time. First off, I'm gonna move this up. So we're working right from the point where we have those strands tied off. And this is an excellent moment to mention a wonderful set of tools that I purchased from my friend Josh Fint. These are 3D printed jigs so that I'm able to resize strands. 
Um, so we're at five millimeters, we need to go 4.5. So this one right here, I'm just gonna grab my first strand. This part makes me nervous, but we gotta do it. This is how this works here, little razor blade. And we just start up here. Goes in that groove right there. And now we can begin to resize our strand very slowly. Just like that. Not taking off a lot, so I think what I'm gonna do is make the bolt jump to four millimeters. I think that'll be fine, actually. That's what we're gonna do. All right. Let's do it. We gotta do it. Uh, let's see. Four is, ah, here it is. As you can see, I've used this one quite a bit, the little marker indicators kind of worn off there. Okay, here we go. There we go. Nice and easy. No rush. This part scares the heck out of me. Well, at least I got a lot of practice splicing in strands, so if I did cut all the way through one, wouldn't have much of a problem. But still, I don't want to have to do that. Okay. Number one. Every time I do this, I take it and put it up here onto the next one. Into the groove. And again, I'm gonna get a lot of a lot of hate from uh, for doing this, but it's just where I'm at, you know. There we go. This one's quite a bit longer. This is probably the twelve footer. Okay, get rid of these little tassels. And I'm just gonna do this with every strand. Just resize it down to about four millimeters, you know? And every time I do it, I'm not doing all of them here. I'm just kind of maybe an inch or so down every time, just so they're not all being resized in one spot. And again, this is not the ideal way to do this. I know, I know it's not. And I'm just gonna do this for all 12 strands. Well, things are going very smoothly. And here's a good sign. I actually can't tell where I started splicing in strands. And that's a great sign. In other words, um, we resize these strands, everything, you can see there's not a lot of crowding anymore, but things are, or I should say things are not very crowded here, but stuff is starting to get a little bit bunched up. So it means we need to give these strands another resizing. So now, uh, we just finished up with a 4.5 millimeter resizer, and now I'm looking for four millimeters. So let's go ahead and tie these off again, and we're gonna go through that whole process of resizing, taking a half a millimeter off all these 12 strands, and then I think we're gonna be able to start dropping strands. We still haven't dropped a thing, and we're at like, coming up on about five feet. So this is looking pretty good. Let's get our blade, here it is. So I used up all this. I'm just going to break this off. Somebody told me that these lines are for, they're scored so that when you use up a certain amount of blade, you just break it off. I don't know if it's true. That <laughs> didn't really work very well, but anyway. So here we go. Time to resize. Again, I'm going to push this up. So it's a little, we're starting from a little bit higher up. Definitely feel more comfortable doing that. Of course, I always have my leather piece there to protect the whip from the jaws of the clamp, the vise. And here we go. I'm getting more and more comfortable with resizing these strands. At first I was scared to death that I was just going to cut right through them. But I'm feeling like I'm getting... What I was doing earlier, 
I had the blade too steep of an angle. So if you have it more shallow of an angle, it just cuts through much more easily. Look at that, it's like butter. Throw that aside. On to the next one. We have been platting along in 12 plat under three over three. And this is really good experience for me. Actually just feeling the leather in my hands, resizing the strands and the satisfaction of seeing all those strands fit into place. The nice warmth of that brandy leather. Man, I tell you what, I'm going to get back into making leather whips. This on top of the 2000 23 Los Angeles Whip Convention, just seeing all those beautifully handcrafted whips made out of leather always pushes me over the edge and I say, man, I'm gonna get back into it. So now, with this, this this is what broke the uh, camel's back right here, you know? This is the strand that broke the camel's back. We're plaiting along here. I ended up doing another resizing about right here. So these strands are 3.5 millimeters wide. And I think we're probably gonna end at about three millimeters wide. And then we're gonna just start dropping strands and these strands for the overlay are going to remain three millimeters all the way to the fall hitch. It's gonna be a six point fall hitch. But I just wanted to just jump in here and just show you guys what we're doing. Platting under three over three, 12 plat. And it's going well. Well, before we resize those strands down a little bit further, I just decided to come out and give my fingers a little break. Beautiful late winter night, and uh, pretty soon we're going to start hearing spring peeper frogs. And that's when I get really happy and just start to feel like myself again. Never been a winter guy. I'm always uh, spring and summer for me. I miss the Batman guy. I wonder what he's up to these days. I figured with uh, all the balloon sightings we've had over the past couple weeks, that was maybe weird enough of an event to, to snap him out of his uh, hibernation, maybe inspire him to get back in his car and do what he does best, you know, drive around screaming Batman in the middle of the night. But maybe he's on to bigger and better things, although I can't think of anything better than doing that. God bless that man. <laughs> Batman! What if he drove by right now? Wouldn't that be great? That would make my year. Not gonna happen. Tipper, what are you doing? Hmm? Eating sausage. Okay guys, so we are going to scale these strands down one more time. Right now they're at 3.5 millimeters in width and I'm gonna whip out the three millimeter jig and get them down to a final width of three millimeters. I'm very tempted to go down to 2.5 millimeters, but we'll see. This whole thing is kind of on the fly, seeing, making decisions as I go. So we might end them at three millimeters, which is about ready, which is about the, which, which is the size we're about to scale these down to, but I might go to 2.5 to finish it off. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, take off another half millimeter on all 12 strands. Just made the decision. We are stopping at three millimeters and not going any thinner. That is my final decision. So I'm gonna resize these all down to three millimeters and from there on out, it's just gonna be strictly dropping strands in order to achieve taper. So resize these up. Alrighty, my friends, it's time to drop the first strand. We're about at the six foot mark on this 10 foot whip. Here's the strand we're going to be dropping from the right hand side. So all these strands are three millimeters wide, as you're well aware of by now. And no more resizing. We're just going to be dropping strands here on out all the way to the fall pit, fall hitch, which is going to be a, I believe it's going to be a six point fall hitch. We'll decide that when we get there though. Anyways, dropping strand number one, just the way I do it with nylon. Just uh, get a few strands on top of it. It's the third one up from the side here. <clears throat> These strands are a little bit greasy, so I'm just gonna wipe them off with this. And I'm gonna give 
the one we're dropping a tug and the two underneath it pull as well, swinging it to the middle and that's gonna become part of the core now. And continue plaiting. Now on the right, we're under three over two, but still on the left, we are under three over three. And continuing on. Under three over two on the right, under three over three on the left. And then when we work our way a little bit down further, I'm gonna give that drop strand a tug to tighten it up. Make it, make sure it's in the middle. Looks good. The thing about leather is you have to untangle it a little more frequently than parachute cord, I've noticed over the years. In my limited experience making leather whips, I've always noticed that you really got to stay on top of the leather because it sticks to itself, especially with the plaiting soap. Okay, and you give it a little pull. I'm not very happy about that. I'm probably going to go back and redo that. Yes, I am. Mm. Or if I can just access the strand right underneath it. There we go. That's better. Keep on going. Then I'll be dropping a strand on the left in the same way that I just did this one. So at this point, what we're going to do is I have been plaiting all this way and I've come up to that final bolster. And what I'm going to do is just split it in half like this and go all the way down. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is going to be folded. And instead of folding it when it's full like this, I split it in half like this, a technique used in order to just get this to all be kind of scrunched together a little more smoothly. If this whole thing was folded, this would be more flat. As a matter of fact, what I might even do, actually I'm definitely going to do this, is to further split down these quarter or these halves. So I'm going to split this into quarters now, or roughly that. And we'll do the same thing. Just bring it up here. Do the same thing with this half. So I'm just basically quartering this width of this bolster tail like this. So now all this will pack together much more nicely and it'll be a nice core to braid over. So that being done there, we're currently five strands on the right, still six on the left. I actually, in all reality, I probably made these strands a little bit too narrow, but it's okay because I have plenty left. Um, there have been times in the past where I made leather whips and I made them too narrow. And narrower strands means, you know, Higher plat count, of course, to cover the surface area of a, a layer underneath. And the thinner the strands, the slower the plaiting is, and the more strands you use up. And if I didn't have as much as I have here, I'd be worried, thinking, oh no, am I really going to make it to five um, to 10 feet total with just these narrow strands? And I'm confident that I will, but in hindsight, I wish that I didn't go down the three millimeters. I wish I would have left it at 3.5 or even 4, but that's okay. It's still going to look nice. As a matter of fact, it's just going to look a little bit more detailed than it already was because it's a higher plat count further down. We might even end this in 8 plat. I'm not sure yet, but there we go. Let's continue on, dropping strands as we go. Okay, we are currently at about the 7 foot mark, and it's time to drop the second strand, this one right here from the left-hand side. So. Let's get everything into place. We're still going under three over two. Sorry, we're still going under three over three on the left. And on the right side, we're going under three over two. So this will no longer be an imbalanced plat count. It's going to be even. So there we go. And here's our strand we're dropping. We're gonna get one more stacked on top of it. Right there.
give it a pull, two underneath it a pull, and swing it to the middle. Being careful not to pull too tightly yet. And now we're just plaiting over all of these tails, the bolster in the middle, as well as the strand that we just dropped. So now on both the left and the right, we're under three over two, 10 plat. And because I decided to be a little overly ambitious on trimming these strands, the width of the strands, <laughs> we're in 10 plat at about the seven foot mark and a 10 foot whip. No harm in doing this, it's just, uh, it's not exactly how the original was. I think we'd probably be in eight plat at this point, but that's okay. It's just gonna look a little more intricate, a little more detailed. So if anything, it makes it look a little neater, I guess, I don't know. But now, let's just carry on in 10 plat for a while. Let me get this mess untangled, and we'll be back with ya. I'll be back with, well, yeah, we, Tipper, both of us here. Alrighty, so I have been working my way down and I've decided that I want to end this whip in a six point fall hitch. I was debating on eight, but I've decided to go ahead and go with six. And that is the original plat count that this whip ended in. So we're coming up very shortly on 10 feet just a little bit longer here and I'm going to drop the final strand from the left hand side. On the left hand side we're currently under 2 over 2 and on the right we're under 2 over 1. And this is the part where I still need to keep the strands hydrated, lubricated I should say with the plaiting soap. But at the same time when the strands are so thin and we're only working with a very small number of strands a little goes a long way. And if I put too much on there, the strands just get too slippery to pull. Matter of fact, I have a little towel here that I use to, after I apply the braiding soap, I'll just kind of, whoop, oh, oh well. I'll just use that to remove the excess so I'm able to still grasp the strands. In just a minute, we'll take one final measurement Drop that strand, and this thing will be just about done. Next step will be to make a fall out of red hide leather. So I'm gonna take a quick measurement of the overall length of the whip in its current state, and then we'll go ahead and drop that strand from the left-hand side, which will be the final drop strand. So I have here a little piece of parachute cord that shows us what 10 feet is right there. So we're just about seven inches away and at seven inches away, I'm going to go ahead and drop that final strand from the left-hand side. So what strand is shortest? It's this one right here. I'm going to give it a little pull, swing it to the middle. And now I'm going to snip out that second strand, or second longest strand that was already there. And now we're just finishing this whip in a six plat over two of the drop strands. This will give a nice little point and looking good a little bit more plaiting soap here Ooh, it feels so good to be this far along in this project so glad it worked out so here we are under two over one on the left and the right side. And we will just plat this all the way out to a total of 10 feet, and then we'll make a fall. Right there sits the 10 foot mark. We've done it. Next thing we're gonna do is make a fall out of this red hide. It's very strong leather, cowhide. And it's about 30 inches long, which would be a good sized fall for this whip. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to be using the strander to make this fall. Now normally you would have a wider piece of hide for a fall and you just lay it on the ground, take a long, like a yardstick, yeah, metal edge, straight edge, and then just make a, 
you know, decreasing width. But the way we're going to do it is we're going to use that strander. So I'm going to get a fresh blade in there and I'll show you how I do this. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I have my strander here and I'm going to force the front end of it through the blade like this. And as we work our way down, this is a little bit of a tricky part. This is not the normal way of making falls, but it's it's been what I've done all these years. So we work our way down, I'm going to decrease the width like this. Every couple inches, I'm making it smaller and smaller. A little more. A little more. A little more. And this is how we get a taper to our fall. I think it works pretty well, actually. The key is to go very, very slowly. Let's see how we did. Mm, I'd like the end to be a little bit, honestly, I'd like the beginning to be a little bit more narrow than that. But once we stretch it, I think it's gonna be okay. Okay, so I have it in there, and this is, let's try to see what it is right now. It's probably eight or nine millimeters. Um, let's see what nine looks like. Almost. Let's go for, uh, let's do 8.5. 8, 8. Actually, let's see what 8 looks like. Yeah, that could work. So I'm going to go down a little ways. And we're going to take off 8 millimeters here. Start it. We'll just go ahead and start it up at eight. And then we'll just decrease. So that's eight. We'll do. Oh, is there a seven in here? Do 7.5. Again, this is the unconventional way to taper a fall. 7.5, and then we'll go 6.5 down here. Working our way down, and then we'll do five point, well, we'll just jump all the way down to five. And I'm just gonna keep just tapering this out. Nothing too special. Okay, so we got a really nice taper that I feel really good about on this fall. It's time to heavily grease it with plating soap. This gives some weight to it, protects it, makes it more durable, less brittle all that good stuff. Now, what we can do, we could actually, if we wanted to, wrap this around a hook and it would be a lot less painful. Um, hang on a second. I'm gonna use a screwdriver. I'm gonna wrap this around here a few times. And this is just kind of helping to shape the edges round them off a little bit. Not get it too tight. There we go. Stretching the leather, working that leather dressing into the leather. That looks pretty good. Yeah, red hide is 
really good leather for making falls. Um, there's a lot of stock whips um, made out of red hide for the overlay or the plaiting. It's good leather. I have to make a decision as to how long I want this thing to be. And I think what I'll do is I'll just leave it at its length, its current length, attach it to the whip, and just fine tune it as I'm cracking the whip and see what the sweet spot is. I think that's what I'm going to do. So now we just have to put a little slit in it for it to go over the whip. We'll tie it on, and this whip will be done. I can't wait. I'm excited for this thing to be done. getting hot. <laughs> it actually feels good on my hands. That heat helps it soak in. If I kept going quicker than this, I'd actually burn my hands. That's how, how much friction's building up from this. Kind of baking it into the leather. Alrighty, there we have it. Next step, let's do it. Let's pop the little slit in there, round it off, tie it on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just let's take a look at the end of the whip. Yeah, that should be perfect. Um, I'm going to actually make a little, I'm just going to cut it right here and then just shape it a little bit with the scissors. Like that. Now, we can put the little slice all the way through, and this is where the whip is going to be fed through. Doing my best to show you guys this. Sometimes when I'm working on a whip, it's almost like Filming is a nuisance and I'm just so tempted to put the camera away and just work. But I will resist the temptation to do that. There we go. Whip goes through there. There's our fall. Let's put it on. Okay, so here's our fall. So I want it shiny side up. And what I like to do is just fold all the strands in half and just force them through that eye all at once and then we just pull the slack through if we need to. Grab them, pull them through, this, this goes up here like that. Make sure everything ends tightly. That's what we want. We want to make sure that everything ends tightly. So get my six strands there. And I'm actually just gonna tie off the two strands that make up the core so I don't get them confused with working strands. We'll give it a couple more nice tight pulls there to make sure that that is secure. I like it. And now what we're going to do is just uh, add a little bit of plaiting soap to this area, a little bit to the fall. We'll be adding more momentarily. Laying this fall like this behind here, I'm going to take the first strand, and this is what I've been doing all along in these videos for all these years. We're just tying a fall hitch. This one just so happens to be six strands instead of the usual four. first one and then I'm tying this off this way so I know that I've already done that one and just working my way down the line whatever strand appears to be the next best choice which is this one you know what I need more plaiting soap I'm gonna just do everything there so we can get these nice and tight without worrying about anything breaking which I don't think we would anyway but 
I'm not used to leather and sometimes I don't know exactly how it's going to behave, so I like to just be sure. There's the second one. Tie that as well. Next one down the line. That one's already been, that's one of the core strands. We don't want to mess with that. This one looks like a good next one. Just tying little half hitch loops here like that. Feeding the strands through. Nice and tight. Next one. Right here, I like that. A little bit extra grease there. I mean, this is so long, I don't need it to be this long, so I'm just gonna cut it. Put it through. Nice and tight. Two more. Core there. Here's another one. Grab some plaiting soap from up there. Through there. Good. One more, where is it? Which one did we not do yet? Ah, there it is. Pull it to the front, around the back, cutting off that excess there, don't need that. Slide it through. Nice and tight. And now what I'm gonna do is individually go through these strands and in sequential order we're gonna do we're gonna tighten one at a time so I'm looking for the top one and just whichever one moves that's obviously the one that we're pulling so that's it right there the pull now I don't want to get crazy with pulling these strands because they're not <laughs> yeah I mean we are working with kangaroo but yeah see that luckily it broke there so happy it broke there but that's kind of the point I was getting at. We don't want to go crazy with pulling these strands because even kangaroo, that's this width, you can break it. So don't overdo it like I usually do. And that last strand right here, this goes up through the fall right here. Just like that. Now, let's take the fall while holding the whip and pull that down like this. And that tightens everything up. Let's flip it over, that looks good. Give this another little tug, give everything one more little pull. Again, we're not getting crazy with it. And now we can snip these all off. One more little tug on the fall, there we go. Snip this and snip everything about right there. Here we go. As soon as I snip this, the whip's done. Whew. Just kidding. Almost though. So I'm just gonna just round this off a little bit more. And then when we roll the whip, this will be taken care of. A little bit more. It's gotta be terrible for my new scissors. <laughs> Need these to be straight. There we go. All right, guys, it's time to give this whip a roll. Lay this down, give it a roll. Wait, there it is. 
I don't know why I'm running around as if I'm got to get this done right now, but I'm just anxious to see it rolled out. I think that's what's going on, guys. Yeah. Roll the ball hitch. This is where we spliced in the strands, right here. Rolling that extra hard. And the rest doesn't need rolling because it already was rolled. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of a little bit of dampness on my hand from a little bit of plating soap. Get rid of the dust that I just put on it. Yeah, there we go. Done. Oh. Ah. Oh. Amid a late winter suntan, celebrating with an artificial heat lamp. Oh man, that was hard. <laughs> that was tough, man. And now I'm gonna tell a ghost story. It's kind of funny because I actually had a dream a few days ago that one of my like whip maker friends saw me working on this whip and they were telling me, oh, that's too short. That's never gonna be, it's never gonna reach 10 feet. Maybe you can do six feet. And in the dream I was like, oh no, what have I done? Oh no, is this gonna work out? Last thing I'm gonna do is take some leather conditioner and go over the whole whip. Probably shouldn't do this sitting down. And just really hydrate all those strands. And then lastly, what we're gonna do is give it a layer of shellac to give it shine. But I really wanna kinda take this leather conditioner and go over that fall hitch, because we want to make sure those strands stay hydrated. The fall as well. This is leather conditioner that I'm applying right now to the whip. So I want this to soak in overnight. I'm gonna take it inside where it's nice and warm. And tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll take a rag and remove any, any of the excess before we shellac the whip. Oh man, there it is. Let's set it on the table, take a look at it. Well, here it is, my friends. So the brandy kind of became a little bit darker than I would have liked. So the place where we spliced in the, the new strands is right about here. But we can see we put the first one in about right here. You can see slowly they're getting a little bit darker and darker, indicating that more strands are being injected in. And about this point here, I think it is, we're solid, all new strands. Whip tapers down, here's the fall hitch, six point fall hitch. And I'm not going to crack it tonight. I'm going to wait 
for the leather conditioner to soak in. We'll tie on a cracker tomorrow, um, shellac it, and then this thing will truly be done. All right, I forgot I was gonna give this fall a roll. So we're gonna do that right now. This will just kind of help round it off, make it more aerodynamic. Tie on this cracker, goes in like this. Around here. Looks good, right there. We have here some clear coat shellac. So more often than not, when you see a shiny kangaroo hide whip, it probably has a layer of shellac on it. Shellac is a sealer. It's a finish liquid that a lot of people will put on furniture. But shellac is oftentimes used for leather whips because it gives the whip a nice shine. But it still allows leather conditioner to pass through it. So we're going to apply some of this bullseye shellac to our whip. It dries very quickly too, which is nice. So I have the whip here hanging from a wrist loop from a bicycle and the fall is tied on the throttle of a snowblower. It has to be a snowblower and a bicycle or this will not work. It's gonna give a nice shine to our whip. Reload. Continuing on. Gotta make sure you get all 360 degrees of the whip. Doesn't have to be a crazy amount, but just enough to get a nice shine. Well friends, the moment has come. This whip is finished. Got the whip in, and uh, I just gotta say, this thing is, as you all can see, it's as if nothing ever happened to this whip. Anyways, I'm gonna make this real fast. Uh, let's give it a go. This is kind of the part of the project where I look down and I'm tempted to make assumptions that I've perhaps bitten off a little more than I could chew. Woo! I think I need some sleep. I think I'm gonna lose some subscribers. <laughs> well guys, we got it cracking again. Reese, I had a good time fixing your whip, man. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.